Welcome to sunny Brittany. It's a fantastic weather forecast we've got for the next few days, so we're making the most of that. And this video is about the aero testing that the major wheel companies do and what they're not doing and what they're not telling you. Because as we all know, one of the big selling factors of wheels these days is their aero performance. And every single company will tell you that theirs is the best, they got the, they got the best shape, uh, they got the best performance at this your angle and they beat all the others and everyone's trying to outdo each other basically on aero when if you look at the actual rim shape of all these wheels um, they're all pretty much the same I mean they all produce a 30, a 50, an 80 mil rim and if you look at them all I mean you're splitting hairs between between any, any of them they're all pretty much the same shape so it's very hard for them to kind of differentiate theirs from someone else's because the aero performance of all these rims is going to be extremely similar but the thing that they're not doing and they're not testing for is rotational drag now this is something that i've always considered to be important and in an earlier video in fact one of the very first videos i did i tried to do a kind of basic experiment to demonstrate a little bit the effects of rotational drag now i'll be the first to hold my hands up and say that video was was flawed it's it was very basic it didn't have enough uh, i didn't have a, uh, a speed sensor on the wheel i could have done it a lot better but all i was trying to do was just try and show that rotational drag is important and that you can even show the difference in two wheels just on a stand like this just purely um, how well they perform in a stationary situation which obviously is not ideal because there's no air moving across them but it's still going to give you an idea of how they're going to perform in in real life i mean if a wheel performs extremely well in a stationary situation you can suppose that it's going to do fairly well in a in a translational situation so what are we actually looking at here i mean when you talk about translational drag it's the the drag where the air is moving across the wheel like this and rotational drag obviously is the power to spin it's how much power do you have to put in to actually make that wheel spin and DT Swiss has just come out with uh, quite a detailed um, study on rotational drag for their new wheels and uh, you can see it here and they're talking about as much as 25% of the overall drag being down to rotational rotational drag so it's an extremely important um, aspect of the aero performance of your wheel and yet no one's really been talking about it if you go and look at the zip and Reynolds websites they hardly even mention it and yet you have a company like DT Swiss a respected company telling you that yeah up to 25% of everything that's going on here is down to rotational drag and we know full well that bladed spokes are where it's at for aero efficiency um, you have companies hiding the, the nipples so that they're not uh, they're not in the airflow so it's out there people know about it but when you have an aero um, aero data from companies like zip and and envy and they're talking about yeah it's great at this your angle and that's important sure but you are not getting the full picture if they're not telling you the power required to spin the wheel and albeit you have a guy on a bike and on rollers in the wind tunnel and the wheel is spinning so it's creating a sort of kind of real world condition where the wheel is, is spinning if you don't measure the power it takes to, to spin that wheel then you are neglecting an important component of, of what's going on and uh, you know it's, it's no point saying yeah our, our wheel is the best by 0.5 of a watt when potentially it could be worse by three or four watts and when it comes to actually spinning that wheel so you know, I think the reason why they haven't really focused so much on that is because it's quite difficult to do it's expensive you have to uh, you have to have a kind of special rig with a motor that's, that's spinning the wheel so you can measure the exact power it's, it's taking to, to spin that wheel and I, just in the basic experiment I did uh, you can see how the uh, lightweight was spinning down from 40 kilometers an hour to 20 kilometers an hour much slower than the Karima was and that has been borne out also in the real world testing that I've done where the Karima is also showing that it's slightly worse aero performance and I mean I'm convinced that's down to 
aero, rotational, rotational drag basically. The Karina has big fat spokes which are not aero at all, they're circular, they're not bladed and that has to have a, a penalising aero effect and although yeah, when, when you do a basic spin up test like this um, you have bearing drag also of course but the, 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 main, the main thing going on at high speeds, i.e. above <clears throat> sort of 35, 40 kilometers an hour, the main factor is aero drag because as we all know, aero drag increases with the square of your speed. So the faster you go, the more and more aero becomes, becomes a factor. Bearing drag is just linear. Bearing drag just goes along like this and so will increase slightly as, you, as it gets faster and faster. But aero drag is, is exponential, so it will, it will go up like this and become more and more of a factor. And I mean, you could hear in that video just the noise of, of, the spinning, of the spinning wheel was down to the spokes. The spokes are moving a lot of air. You know, when, when they're moving around, there's, there's 16, 20 of them, 20, 24 of them, and they're all thrashing away at the air. And the tips especially have a very high velocity because they have to go around further. So this is partly why a deeper rim is more aero, not just because of its translational properties through the air, but also because the spoke is shorter and you have less attack, less spoke attacking the air. So, you know, basically, I would say that a lot of the the um, advertising that you see for these wheels, it doesn't mean shit really. If if you're not if you're not looking at the rotational drag as well, you, they're leaving out a quarter of the picture. You, and, these, and their comparisons are, are pretty much worthless. So, you know, Hambini is uh, a fellow proof driller who has looked at a lot of this aero stuff in detail. And although we're both engineers, he's, he's the aero engineer. I'm a mechanical engineer, so I'm not, uh, I don't claim any great credentials as far as it comes to high-end aerodynamics. But, um, you know, so have a look at some of his videos. He's, uh, he's kind of concluding the same, the same kind of things. And yeah, I mean, just uh, just be aware that um, if you're buying a wheel like a Zip 303, has there been any testing done and any um, optimizations done for its rotational rotational drag? I would think so, but is there any data on it? I, I haven't seen any, so I, I don't know. And I and I think DT Swiss is definitely going the right way in publicizing it and optimizing their rotational drag and I think it's I think it's really important.